How's it going everyone? Welcome to another video. It's been a while since we've done sourdough bread. I haven't done a no need sourdough bread yet. So here we are. We go 70% hydration dough, with just a little bit of wholemeal flour for extra flavor. You can bake it on the same day, you could cold proof it. And as you can see, the result speaks for itself. Sometimes no need bread can be very good. So let's get to it and see what we need. Some strong white bread flour, wholemeal flour, water, a little bit of salt, and a nice and happy sourdough starter. The key to any sourdough bread really. You could add some seeds to this dough if you wanted to, but we're not going to do that in this video. Now on to the equipment. We've got a bowl, scales, a dough scraper, a temperature probe, a proofing basket, and something to slash your bread with. I'm going to use a razor blade, you can use a sharp knife, and the ever important baking vessel. This kind of cast iron skillet with a lid is perfect. It traps steam inside, it makes the bread rise a lot better. So let's start making our pre-ferment. All we need to do is take some of the water, a little bit of sourdough starter and some of the flour, mix them together and leave it to proof. I'm feeding mine at a 1 to 5 to 5 ratio, which is 10 grams of starter, 50 grams of water, 50 grams of flour. Your starter may be different, the conditions in your kitchen may be different, so you might want to change the ratio. I am using room temperature water, my kitchen is around 21 degrees Celsius. And once you've mixed your leaven, you can simply cover it up and leave it in the bowl to ferment. I always like to put it in a jar, just to show you guys how it's rising during the night. It's worth noting that we are pre-fermenting around 15% of the total flour. That's quite an average amount, normally I do 10 to 20% depending on the bread I'm making. So let's see how this puffs up. I'm gonna leave it for around 10 to 12 hours. It should almost triple in size. As you can see, it's rising pretty well. It's quite happy. Let's have a closer look at that. See, it's nice and full of bubbles. When I stir it, it's got some resistance to it. If your leaven is really loose, and you can basically pour it out of the jar, then it's all overproofed. Since we're not kneading this dough, we need to use warmer water for it. My kitchen is around 21 degrees, so my water will be 26. The dough temperature will be somewhere in the middle. So let's get on with making this dough. Grab a large bowl, add the water, the salt, give it all a good mix. Make sure to dissolve all the salt. Again, because we're not kneading this dough, we want to mix everything properly before we add the next ingredient. All the ingredients must be dispersed evenly throughout the dough. So every time you add an ingredient to the water, give it a good old mix. So next up, the wholemeal flour, mix again. And after that, last but not least, the white flour. From here on in, you can grab your dough scraper and mix it all together. And as I said earlier, it's very important to disperse the ingredients evenly throughout the dough. And once you've mixed it with your scraper for a while, continue on by hand. You want to fold the edge over the middle, going around in a circle, until you don't see any more dry flour. If you feel that it's getting a bit too sticky, you can wet your hand with water and continue. So go around in a circle a couple of times, and that's practically it. All we need to do now is scrape it all together so it's one cohesive piece. And since this is a no need bread, we will have to give it some folds. And it's always good practice to start the first fold right before fermentation. And all I'm doing here is picking the dough with wet hands, and then folding the sides down and into the middle. We're already taking the first steps to create some tension in the dough. Fold it a few times until it's nice and round. Now we can start fermentation. Final dough temperature of around 25 degrees Celsius is perfect for this. Now we're gonna cover it up, leave it to rest for 20 minutes and start the folding process. So, fold number one. This is how you do it. Wet your hands, wet your scraper, release the dough from the bowl, then flip it upside down because we already started creating a surface, so we're going to continue on folding in the right direction. Now fold the edge over, hold it down with the other hand, go around in a circle, till the reach point where you started. And you will feel the dough becoming tighter and tighter. And if you feel that your hands are sticking, you can wet them lightly with water. So after you've gone around and you can feel that the dough is nice and tight, you can pick it up, turn it smooth side up again, and do what we did straight after mixing. Push the sides down and into the middle. But don't overdo this too much, otherwise the surface will rip. As you can see, that happened a little bit right there. 
but that's not the end of the world. Now cover this up, leave it to rest for another 20 minutes and get on with the second fold. And the second one is exactly the same as the first one. Release the dough from the bowl using wet hands, place its smooth side pointing down, go around in a circle, folding it, then tuck the sides into the middle and up, and that's the fold done. And with every fold, it's getting smoother and smoother and tighter. We are building up the strength, it's keeping its shape. Cover it up, leave it to rest for another 20 minutes and do the final fold. Exactly the same as before, nothing strange. Wet hands, fold it, cover it up. And now we need to leave it proof for around three hours. This will of course depend on temperature in your kitchen, in your dough, on the activity on your starter, but you're looking for it to be almost double in size. Only then take the next step. And now we need to pre-shape it. Dust your dough with flour, release it from the bowl using your scraper, tip it out on the table. A lot of times when only making one loaf of bread, I would skip this step and go straight to the final shaping. But because this is a no need dough, we're still trying to build up some tension in it. So a light pre-shape will go a long way. Spread your dough out, fold the sides across each other and fold the top down and then fold the bottom over as well. This doesn't have to be very tight. We only want to do a few folds to kind of get it into the right direction. It's been rising for three hours, so the gluten is nice and relaxed. And as it's relaxed, we need to make it nice and tight again. Now dust your dough with flour, cover it up so it doesn't dry out, and we'll leave it to rest for around 20 minutes. And now it's final shaping time, and we really get to build up the tension. And we're going to use what is known as the stitching method. And you'll see exactly why it's got that name. So dust your dough with flour, lightly, do not use too much. If you use too much flour, the dough is not going to stick to itself. Flip it upside down and turn it 90 degrees. Now spread it out just a little bit and take the bottom third and fold it over the middle. Then grab one of the bottom corners, fold it over and do the same on the opposite side. Now take the top and fold it right down to the bottom. If you feel your hands sticking, dust them with flour. And now comes the stitching part. Starting from the top, work your way down to the bottom. Stitch the dough up until it's nice and tight. Once you get to the bottom, roll it up. You want to feel the tension in your hands. And that's how you make a nice tight loaf. And if you've never done this before, here's another look at it. Spread it out gently, take the bottom, fold it up, grab a corner, cross it over, do the same on the opposite side, Make sure everything's nicely sealed. Take the top, fold it right down to the bottom. Dust your fingers with flour if they're sticking and stitch it up. Cross that dough over in the middle, making it nice and tight. I mean, you can just see by looking at how tight it is. And lastly, just roll it up. And again, if you feel that your hands are sticking, then dust them with flour, lightly. Don't use too much flour. And that's how we build tension in a no-knead dough. Or any dough for that matter. It's a good method, right? Now make sure your basket is dusted with flour. Dust your dough as well. And you don't need to use a lot. This is not a very sticky dough. Place it in your basket, smooth side pointing down of course. There's one more thing we can do after we place it in the basket. Pinch everything together and stitch the seam up at the bottom. This will help it keep that tension just a little bit more. But don't go too crazy. If you feel that the loaf is nice and tight, you don't want to rip it. Now we can cover it up and we're ready for the final fermentation. The final proofing time will very much depend on the temperature of your kitchen, the temperature of your dough, how active your starter is. When it comes to sourdough bread, you should never listen to the times that anyone tells you in a recipe, because your starter is different. My times are just a guideline. Keep an eye on your bread. It must be visibly puffed up before you bake it. Now one hour before baking, preheat your oven 240 degrees Celsius without the fan and also preheat your baking vessel. And this looks good to me, it's been about an hour and a half. It's nice and wobbly, it's puffed up, it is ready for the oven. Now make sure you don't burn your table, right? Grab your hot pot out the oven, remove the lid. Always be careful when doing this, it's best not to have anyone else in the kitchen. Dust the bottom of your loaf with a little bit of flour and tip it out into the pan. And then you can sprinkle a little bit of flour on the surface and just rub it in so it's nice and smooth. 
This is optional, you could also keep it as it is. And as you can see, we have done a good job in building up the tension in this dough. Because instead of spreading out into the pan, it's staying vertical. Now last but not least, grab your razor or knife and slash it. I normally cut it about an inch deep, which is about two and a half centimeters. I wouldn't suggest going any deeper than that. But you don't want your cut to be too shallow either. Now let's pop the lid on, stick this in the oven and bake it for around 20 minutes. The lid will keep the steam inside and help the bread expand. Now remove the lid and this is my favorite part. You just never know what's going to be under there. But this is looking pretty good. Well, of course it's not ready yet. We need to put it back in the oven for around 15 more minutes. And there you have it. A no need sourdough bread, 70% hydration. It's pretty good for no need bread, right? Makes you think why should we need bread at all? But there's always trade-offs, right? We saved our energy by not needing it, or we paid back with the time that we used for folding it. But what do you think of this? Do you like making no need bread? Which one is your favorite? Let me know down in the comments. And if you have any questions or suggestions, also let me know. And don't forget to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.